Yeah, welcome everyone to another episode of Taking Up Space, a Michelle Mayer podcast. Always excited about coming forward. To, uh, every every time I decide to come forward and deliver you all something thought provoking that you can kind of munch on throughout your day. Today, I'm just going to be speaking briefly about my experiences with God and how I have seen God move in life. Um, while pregnant. Yeah, while pregnant. You know, it was it was during my pregnancy, friend, that I need to take these off. That I have um I can recall seeing the movement of God be tremendous in my life. You know, when I first found out I was pregnant, I was very I was just in awe and excuse me, the months and days and weeks that progressed during my pregnancy, I would just kind of like fantasize about, you know, what is it going to be like to give birth? Even prior to becoming pregnant, I would always think, wow, I wonder what it's like to be pregnant. And I wonder what it's like to just give birth to a child. And then when I became pregnant, my focus was, wow, what am I going to experience when I go into labor? And I think many people think of that, men included, they, they wonder, you know, what Wonder what it's like for a woman to give birth. What does that feel like? There are two things in this life that we ponder and that we wrestle with. We don't have really any answers with uh, answers to until we actually go through them. And that is giving birth, being born, and transitioning from this life. I've never heard of anyone come back from uh, transitioning and completely just give us a full um, dissertation on what they experienced. As I have women that have actually given birth, but you must actually go through it to be able to understand it. It was, you know, when I went into labor, even prior to going into labor, it was the experience. I mean, most women, any of you women that are watching, you all may or should be able to agree with me to the fact that don't we have the most vivid dreams while pregnant? I remember while I was pregnant, I was working with a woman and she told me, she said, you know, when I, I think I was in my first trimester, might've been one or two months. And she said, you know, during my pregnancy, I had the most vivid dreams. And I thought I immediately looked at her like, wow, because I was starting to have the most vivid, the most realistic dreams. I've never had vivid dreams as I had while I was pregnant. Never. I'm talking about detail down to the precise detail type dreams is what I experienced when I was pregnant. And even, even from that, it was just a spiritual experience. Being the vessel that holds another vessel being created within you, the spirit coming into that vessel, all of that happens while they are within you. It's really, truly something beautiful and something monumental about being a woman. It, it speaks to God's love over women. And this is not a, you know, hierarchical thing where I'm saying women are blessed more than men. It is not anything like that. But we have to pay homage. I, as a woman, am in awe of women. And just being a woman, the things that I've experienced, the things of God that God has created for me to do, for us to do as a species of people, is it is just awe-inspiring. Don't blame me. You're gonna have to be mad at God about that. This is not a hierarchical thing, it's just paying homage. But moving from that, you know. Even throughout my pregnancy, when I went into labor, just the ability, I, I, I keep saying this, I know God better because of my experiences in, in giving birth, being a mother. During the labor phase of things, the mathematics at play, you, they were precise. You could bank on them. They, they, and they, and they increased in repetitions. It was, it, 
was like my body was a computer. When, when I didn't push my child out. My body pushed her out. It wasn't me that did it. I didn't create my child. I'm not the creator of anything. I am the vessel. This is where I get know your role from. Me being a mother, me birthing a child into this world, I could, I could see in a real way that I have a role. I am not the creator. I am not the God. I am not smart enough to have put my child together as perfectly as God had. Had it been me, I don't know if she would be who she is. I'd have been missing some things. God created her and used me as a vessel to do it. But isn't that how God moves, you guys? When I gave birth to her, it was the mathematics that I could rely on that I could find rest in, in between those contractions. I knew that they were coming and they would just incrementally get stronger and stronger and stronger until it was just all in full dilation and you're in discomfort, severe discomfort. And I had to use my imagination to get through the pain. Isn't that just like life? Come on, y'all. But isn't that just like life? During the hardest times of your life, you have to deny what you see at times. And you have to have what we call faith, knowing. You got to be able to believe, see something outside of what is showing itself to get through it. It's exactly what I did when I gave birth to my daughter. And I, it is exactly what many women around the world do. It is the formula. When my daughter was born, when I took her home from the hospital, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in the kitchen about to give her her first bath in the kitchen sink. I wasn't going to bathe her completely because they say you're not supposed to do that. This was like three, two or three days after she was born. But I was going to wipe her down and get her right. And because she's so tiny, the kitchen sink was the most convenient place. And I remember having her in my arms. I was talking to my mother. And she, my mother and I were in conversation. And I happened to look down and she was staring at me as if she was in shock. Literally, the, she was, I could see it. She was in shock as to where am I? Who are you? Like startled. Now, I knew she knew my voice because after I gave birth to her directly afterward, uh, I was talking to my mother about, you know, bringing her over to me. And she was looking over her head, trying to find me by way of my voice. So she knew my voice. And during the time that I had brought her home, I had her in my arms. I was talking to my mother and she knew it was me, but she didn't know the environment. She was born from the safety and the warmth of my womb. And in moments, she was taken from there into this loud, clamoring, noisy, cold, bright place. But isn't that how things are? She was born into chaos, something new. Chaos always brings, I'm sorry, newness always comes with chaos. When we were when we were conceived, friend, as the sperm was uh let out, that was chaos. That is the most chaotic moment. We were born through chaos and we were swimming amongst billions, all vying for one thing. And that was to impregnate, penetrate the egg. That one Sperm was programmed, drawn to the egg, magnetized, and was swimming its fastest to get there amongst billions of others doing the same thing in complete and utter chaos. Left her, left the male's body 
and was sent off into a new environment, left the, the warmness and safety of what it knew and sent off into a new environment amongst others that were amongst it in the old environment. And all of them are now competing against one another for one role and one role only. And that is to penetrate the egg. It is through the chaos that we find order, friend. It is through the chaos. And that analogy and this entire analogy speaks to life whether as a sperm cell impregnating a woman or as a child being birthed and out of its mother's body into the world of shapes, sounds, and colors. We have been constantly on the move from the gate. That is where you find God. That is our role. Our role is to move, friend. Our, mo our role, no matter how fast, no matter how slow, our role is to move. Because once that sperm penetrated the woman's egg, it had a rest period. You're not always going to have to move. But there's a season and a time for everything. There's a time for extreme movement. Then there is a, a time for rest. That sperm that penetrated the woman's egg was programmed to do so. It knew what to do. It might not have known why it was doing and all the details of it. Didn't have to. It knew to go and penetrate the egg. A lot of us are moving in life, but we don't even know where we're going. We're just moving. We knew where we were going. We had an idea and we moved and we got that accomplished because we get accomplished things quick. We can accomplish things quickly when we have clear direction. But when there's no direction, friend, you must pace your movement. There are many of us scrambling and just, just reaching for things so that we can stay busy, so that we don't have to listen and we don't have to rest to hear the, the noise that's going on in our head. We stay busy. But I'm here to tell you that the rest period is necessary. Just as the, the, the sperm, after it impregnated the woman's egg, it rested and it allowed what the woman offered to create it. You must, after doing so much work, rest and allow what God has for you to show itself in your life. There is nothing wrong with that. The world will have you thinking to go, 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 go. No, look at nature. After extreme exertion, you must rest or else you burn yourself out. That resting period allows God to do God's work through you. I'm not talking all out rest. I'm talking about slowing your pace. Slow your pace down. There's nothing wrong. There's no competition. Many of us are in competition with one another when really your only competition is you. You should only be looking to do greater than you did yesterday. Whether it takes you a month, a year, or however long to do it, you should always be looking to do better than you did before. The philosopher, friend, at times has to be the student. None of us have all the answers. You got to take time to recharge yourself and to allow God to Download new information. Give you new perspectives. How else do you get better? If you don't allow, you will only go as far as you are right now. You have nothing else to offer up. You'll exhaust all of your resources. This is my message for you today. I had done another video yesterday on it, but I wanted to fine tune it. You'll burn triple 
the amount of energy doing unnecessary work just to keep yourself busy than you would if you took the time to slow your pace and listen and look for God. We don't give those people that know when to slow up enough credit. Because a lot of times, friend, many of us, I, 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 I truly believe many of us are out here winging it. We put up a good front like we got all the answers and we know exactly where we're going. We have a full blueprint of what life is going to be like and how we're going to get there. And I, I, I maybe I missed that day in school because my life has not been like that. I have been on the other side of that spectrum. My life has been um, trial and error. My life has been, you know, I don't know exactly how this is going to come together, but I know it will. My life has been that way more than I care to discuss. I haven't had the, the gift of knowing absolutely that everything is going to be exactly how I planned them to be. I have found in life that my knowing came from acting, just taking the step, not being in a rush, not competing with a bunch of people. Even though I did that, I needed to do that for a season because in that season of competing, I learned a lot of lessons. I learned a ton of experiences. I learned that competing doesn't get you anywhere. All it does is it makes the ego feel good. It gets you a, it gets you a place amongst men and women that like to do that thing. And there and for a season that is good because you need to know that you can compete. You need to know that you are a formidable opponent because it builds up your self-esteem and most importantly it builds up your knowing of God. Because in order to be a formidable opponent, you had to start from nowhere. You didn't start as a formidable opponent. You didn't start as a strong wall. You started as a weak, confused individual. And God, through experiences, led you to being strong and capable. But there's a season for, for everything. And the season for competition, for me, I'm, I'm not in that. That's just me. And I'm not judging anyone that is. I mean, if you are in that season, go for it. We all had it. But for me, you get to, I've gotten to a season where I'm, I'm out of that. I'm, I've done that. I've been there, done that, read the book, got a medal in it, all of that. I'm on something else. And that's kind of the cycle of life. Once you get to one mountaintop, there's always another for you to climb, whether you want to climb it or not. It's an ever-evolving thing, just as the, the creation process. You left your father, and you were sent by billions, billions of you, into a pool, all fighting for one role. Then you get that role, and you begin a new thing in that thing. And you become comfortable in that role and you're warm in there and you're getting comfortable and you're growing strong and you're hearing sounds around you and outside of you and you become accustomed to that only for that to end and you be birthed into something new. This life is an ongoing, uh, ever-changing event. It's always changing. God is in activity. God is an activity-based God, friend. This is my goal in this conversation. Father and Mother, help me speak it clearly. God is an activity-based God. You don't find God in theory. God is not theoretical. You can find God in, in, in other people's writings of their activities. But if you want to know God, if you want a relationship with God, you can't read about him only, friend. You got to just go out and start living life. Make mistakes. 
There is no perfection. The perfection comes in going, acting, falling, getting up, learning, trying it again, better, falling, acting, learning, getting up, trying it again, better. And through the activity, you are perfected. It is through the activity you are perfected. As you continue to walk in life and through the activity, you gain a formidable relationship with God. Last thing I want to end this on. You know, I always speak to the God being within you. And many, I was reading, I was looking at something the other day and, um, Actually, I was talking about something yesterday and I was talking about, you know, God is within me. And yes, the be, be it that the aspect of God is within me, you could legitimately say that I am God. But it hasn't been that simple for me. I hear many people saying, I am God. I am God. And and I guess they could, they are they are right. But I'm very careful with that. Because you can say that and make yourself believe that it's just you. And it has been my experiences, friend, my activity-based life that I'm pulling from that has shown me that it is not just me. When I was reading Early on in my life, scripture and the walks of Jesus and all of Jesus' uh, communications to people, I would say, I'm God. But then life showed me, without me becoming pompous in that, life showed me in love through hard things. Because just because something is shown to you in love does not mean it's going to come to you in a hug. A lot of things that are shown to us in love are hard, hurtful, painful experiences because they capture our attention. We never forget them. Those loving, kind moments get swept up under the rug if you have enough of them. But those painful experiences, you can count one after the next, after the next in detail. It has been the times in my life when I needed God the most and I could not find God, God went silent. And I, I was so used to God being present and for God to go silent, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I became a, a weakling. I would hide away. I didn't have the, the, the my superpower was gone. And it was in those times that I realized that I am not the God. It is the spirit of God that works through me in tandem with me that gives me the courage. This spirit of God gives me the strength. This spirit of God gives me, gives me the might. This spirit of God gives me the ability to be capable. So when I come forward and you see me in all of my passion and all of my vitality, you are seeing the God within me, friend. You are, it is not me. It is something outside of me, yet it is of me. And there are many aspects to the same power. It does not, it does not rest in one particular place. It does not terminate from one particular way. It has many different aspects and they are all me. These come from pondering yourself, searching and paying attention to the many experiences you have in this life. And this is what I speak to when I say the God within me. I am speaking, I could just as easily say I am God. But I would be pro projecting something to you that makes you believe that I am saying that it is of me, the flesh, the fleshly uh, part of me that I'm speaking to. No, I got to humble that down. I know my role. 
And it does not bother me one bit to pay homage and to shine the light on where my power comes from. It is my pleasure to say, it is the God within me. Because I'm just as much as in all of it as, as you may be of the God within in you. It is not of me. Just like it was not of me to give, to create my child. I did not do that. I don't have the power to do that. I am not smart enough to know even myself enough to be able to create another one like me. It is the God force that prevails throughout this entire world that rests, that found me so worthy that I was created for it to rest within me. That is it. And that is what God is speaking to the children. We're going to do a Bible study tomorrow. God is speaking to the children. How many times in Josh, I mean, uh, Daniel has God said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you will know that I am God. I am going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you're going to know that I am God. How many times I can't count it, friends, from Genesis to Daniel. God has spoken this more times than I don't even know how many times he said it. You will know that I am God. Instead of you using this power that you think is just you. It is not you. You're not that smart. I gotta calm down. Sorry. I'm working on my tone. You are not that smart. Use this childbirth scenario as an example. You're not that smart. Many of us, we better thank God is the God within us. Because if we give birth just off of our intellect, it'd be, it, it be a joke around here. It'd be, a, it'd be a joke. It'd be a hospital. It'd be, it'd be a care center on every corner. In every everybody's house. Not even on every corner. We're not that smart. It is the God force. It is the majesty that created all of this. Not one of us, not even the subordinates, not the angels, nor the demons, none of the spirits from old, none of them can even compare to the majesty and the might of the God force that rests within you. It is a relationship. You are in a relationship with God. God walks with you Everywhere you go, God said in, 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 in to David, I'm not a God of cedar. I created the cedar. I'm a God that walked with you in tents. I walk with you in your low places. You can count on me wherever you go. I am nowhere far away. You can call on me and I'm here quickly. But you got to know me to, for me to come quickly. For you to realize that I've come quickly. Because I can come and you won't even realize it. Because you've allowed all of these other spirits in and now you've confused yourself. And you don't know which is what. You're a house of whores. You've, you've whored out my kingdom. What was once you and I, you have hoarded out. And you've allowed everybody else in to partake of what I made just for me and you. Yo, I'm here to tell you. I, I don't want to get on preaching or anything like that because I'm not a preacher. I'm just here talking. I'm telling you. God is an activity-based God. God is your friend. God is with you every step of the way. Not ever for a second is God not around. God knows and sees everything. You cannot hide nothing. Everything is documented. Everything. You love more than you'll ever know, y'all. I just wanted to come on and drop that for you today. Midday. Keep going. Peace and love.